Hi there, welcome to the channel and welcome back if you're a return viewer. What we do on this channel is review books mainly at the moment and today we're going to talk about this little book, Aktang Schweinhand by Harry Pearson. Now, this book is a bit of a curate's egg again. Um, so what it basically is and what it starts out is and what it says on it is on the cover is a kind of gentle memoir of childhood with a bit of a theme, a theme of war and military and, and fighting and combat um, as seen through the eyes of a young boy. Now Pearson is born in 1961 in the UK, grows up listening to stories of his relatives and their exploits in the war. Um, many of them didn't actually make it back. Um, he uh, goes to see movies about the war with his father and when he's sick one day he gets given a crate of war comics by one of his relatives. Now this is kind of like a full immersion but in the war, the recent World War II and war itself um, for the young people, the, mainly the males were, 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 were soaking in it for most of the decade and I myself was born 10 years after Pearson and it was still around when I was a, a young person in the 1970s and in the early 80s, war kind of pervaded the media, particularly the UK media that we got here in New Zealand, and in the UK itself, as noted in this book, it was a, a, a constant present. And um, he makes a, a, a posit a, a, an explanation for that in this book, where he says uh, other European nations had had war on their doorsteps, more or less constantly throughout the 17th, 18th, 19th century, well, whereas the UK it didn't really hit home until the horrors of World War I in the, in the early 20th century and then when it came and dropped a bomb on them in, in the uh, 1940s uh, it was such a psychic shock that the UK never quite fully recovered from it and it became like a, a thing that all the children had to learn, all, all boys in particular had to learn and um, yeah so that's where it, it put uh, the young Pearson and he talks about uh, the various war related products which seemed to come his way. First there were the comics like I mentioned, then there were model kits, uh, you know, kit set planes, boats, tanks, all that type of thing, which he had various degrees of success in actually assembling. Um, and then there were the Action Man dolls, the UK version of the G.I. Joe, Joe doll, or sorry, action figure, um, and all its various uniforms and, and, and scenarios which you could play with those dolls when it turned out that they were in Pearson's opinion, they're fairly useless because you needed more than one to actually do anything and Action Man couldn't hardly handle half of the equipment that you're supposed to give to him. Um, then we uh, go into the 70s with Pearson and um, he discovers a love of, he, on a holiday he discovers a, a shop selling uh, war gaming miniatures, the plastic ones, the airfix uh, small ones and then uh, from there on he uh, basically develops a love of painting the figures and playing with the figures and he uh, gets into wargaming and that's where this book takes a hard turn. Up until that point it's been a really great memoir, fun, he's self-deprecating, he's humorous, he writes really well, it's, it's really entertaining, you go along with it and you want to learn more about his life, his childhood, his family, all that type of thing. But then when we get into the wargaming stuff the book really changes turns into more or less a faction figures, history of war gaming. Pearson tells us about all the people that he he meets in the hobby um, and then we get facts and figures about pe various famous people in history who played war gaming and what they added to the, the games, um, how they related to the games and how it uh, related to their real life exploits, um, all the famous and infamous people in history who uh, war gamed before the, before the real thing or just you had it as a hobby. The various types of wargaming figures, the flat figures, the lead, the white metal, all that type of thing. Um, Pearson seems half and half embarrassed that he knows so much and that he's got this as a hobby and half kind of defiant, yeah, look at me, this is what I do. Um, you learn a lot about the people he meets during the, his wargaming exploits, some quirky characters, in fact all of them seem to be very quirky characters and some of them would be very worrying to actually know in real life. Um, yeah, so I'm in two minds about this book. It's great memoir, it's great humour, great uh, fun and lightness in, in, at the start. Then it's just endless facts and figures about wargaming from a uh, point about past 
halfway and I was hoping it would get back to his life and tell us more about what what happened during his later teenage years and so on but it's all wargaming all the time and that really uh, disappointed me in this book I wanted to know more about him and um, less about facts and figures on wargaming so that's pretty much my thoughts on this book great first half tails off part way through and Pearson, I've looked into what else he's written, and he seems to be predominantly a sports writer. Writes a lot about cricket, um, sports in Western Europe, and that type of thing. Um, he does have another book out there about cycling around Belgium, Belgium, and kind of memoir type thing there. Might be good to have a look into. I'll see if I can get hold of that in the near future. So, worth it for the memoir aspects, not much else. So, thank you, and... Um, We'll see you next time.